Hi, this is Philip. I'm the CEO and co-founder of SalesWings. And today I'd like to quickly show you how you can connect SalesWings to Salesforce and get the sync running of lead scoring and lead engagement data to Salesforce. So firstly, you can log into your SalesWings account and you can already prepare as well your Salesforce account. So you can just open and log into your Salesforce account. Now, since we're going to install an app from the Salesforce App Exchange, you will probably need administrator access on your Salesforce instance. When you're inside SalesWings, make sure to go first to the settings, which you will find at the top right corner of your SalesWings cockpit. Inside the settings, you will find at the bottom, there's a tab called Salesforce Integration where you will find access to the Salesforce app as well as uh, a link where you can schedule a demo. So if you're interested to find out more about uh, how the integration works and how sales teams benefit and get better sales results, just schedule a demo here. What you can first do is you can go here, install the app. You can also click here and this will take you to the Salesforce App Exchange. SalesWings has a Salesforce certified uh, and uh, security reviewed app officially on the Salesforce App Exchange. It'll give you also a bit more information about the integration. So what you will see here is there's a button, get it now. So you wanna click here, go down, uh, and then log into the App Exchange using your Salesforce credentials. This is going to take you to the to the installation uh, window. Okay. So I'm already logged in. Now this is. Here you can decide either to install it in production, so it's immediately going to be visible to your to your team, or in the sandbox. Now that's a bit of a question on your internal process, but um, you know we're going to go straight ahead and install it in production. Some companies install it first in the sandbox, which is a test environment, and then roll it out from sandbox to production. For smaller companies or companies with a less complicated process. I'd say you can go straight for uh, the installation in the production environment. Now here you'll see some details about the version, uh, reminding you it's a free trial. Uh, and you can click, I have read and agreed terms and conditions. Now, we, if, you, if you're already a customer, make sure to reach out to the SalesWings team and telling us that you're installing the app uh, as well as the number of licenses that you will need. In this case, we will then unlock the number of licenses that you'll be that you'll be needing and make sure everything is going smoothly. If you're in a trial, so during the trial, you have 30 days uh, free trial here. This is linked to your SalesWings account and it's going to give you five licenses inside Salesforce. But of course, in case you need more, just reach out to us and um, and ask us uh, for more. Then you can go ahead and confirm and install. <clears throat> what you'll first need to do now is to log into Salesforce with your Salesforce user and you're coming into the installation process. The installation process uh, will first give you the option to install for admins only all users or specific roles. Now again, that's a question for your team. Typically, I'm going to install it for all users because I have no restriction in terms of geography or different sales teams. So I'm just going to inst install it for all users. And that's really fine as well for you because you will get the number of licenses only that you purchased from SalesWings once you once you subscribe so you will allocate these individually so you can go ahead and install it for all users without a problem clicking install it's going to ask you to give us uh, access to our two servers which, which is our testing server and our live server so make sure you got both here <clears throat> Select it and select here, yes, grant access to these third-party websites. 
one more time. So we have gone through extensive security review, review with Salesforce. So there's nothing here to worry about. Uh, we have dozens of companies that have this integration running and uh, you can install it without any uh, hesitation. The installation now uh, may take up to a couple of minutes, but typically it's very fast. So you'll see here that the installation is already complete. When you're arriving here, you can click here, connect to SalesWings. So what we're gonna do now in the next step is we're going to connect your SalesWings account with, with Salesforce. For this, we're gonna go back to your SalesWings cockpit and you will see here you have a field where you can generate your API token. The API token is kind of like your SalesWings ID which we will put into Salesforce. So I've got it generated already but in your case make sure to first generate it and then copy it and then you can go back to Salesforce, enter the API token here, just paste it here, and then click connect. This will connect the SalesWings to the Salesforce account. Now you can see this already happened. And then to start the synchronization, you will have to click resume sync. So now the synchronization is on and immediately SalesWings will start to sync over lead scoring and lead website activity data to Salesforce. Now a couple of precisions. SalesWings does not create new contacts in Salesforce. SalesWings will only send data about lead engagement on your website and lead scoring to existing Salesforce contacts. So this is something that uh, is quite important to understand. So we will look, is there a Salesforce contact or lead? So it works for both contacts and leads. And we will then synchronize data over to, to these leads or contacts if there's a SalesWings contact uh, and a Salesforce uh, record. Now, what you'd like to do next is there's the next step that you need to do. You need to configure the SalesWings fields in contacts and leads. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open a, a contact here. So SalesWings does not install any fields uh, on the layout. So we've, we've created fields, but you have to first put them on your contact and lead layout. For this, we're going to go here on the contact view. You have the edit layout button. This is the standard view, of course, of Salesforce. And what you want to do first is you want to here in the upper part, you have all the fields and buttons available from Salesforce. You want to first go here and drag a section below. So we're going to create a new section. So I've already done this. So basically what you want to do is you want to call this sales wings, keep it in two columns and just keep it from left to right. That doesn't really matter. So I'm going to cancel because I already have a section here named sales wings. What you then need to do next is you need to create the the fields and values of sales wings in here. And that's very simple. And I recommend you to use the quick find view. The first thing you want to type in is current interest. This will show you the current interest field. This is the sales wings predictive lead score. This will show you how likely the lead or contact is right now to do business with you telling the sales guys you need to prioritize him today and not wait a week to call him back. The other field I'm going to go back up here is called total website visits. So just find, look for total. Total website visits will show you over time how often that person has visited your website showing you his total interest. The next field you want to add is called last visit. So you see we have different ones. We have time of last visit, we have last visit date, last visit, and since last visit. 
So these are quite a few ones. So I, you can add all of these, but I recommend you take since last visit. So that's going to tell you, for example, uh, 10 days ago, or it's going to say yesterday. So that makes it user friendly. You can also add the last visit date, which is going to give you the exact, uh, the exact date. And then, of course, you have time of last visit, which essentially just adds the hour. But that's, in my opinion, a bit less important. The other field you'd like to add is called favorite. Um, now, favorite, so we're going to drag this down first. There's favorite. We're going to put this now in the right column here. And you can also add mark favorite. Now, favorite, when a contact or a lead is marked as a favorite, we will notify the corresponding salesperson about new visits. So you can opt in or opt out of these notifications by marking a lead or a contact as a favorite. Now, I've already all set. So we have current interest, total website visits, since last visit, last visit date, you can opt in or opt out of notifications. What we're soon going to add as well is, of course, the visit history. So showing you exactly which fields, sorry, which web pages he's visited on your on your website. Uh, but we'll show you this in the next video. Now, what you want to do is you want to save, of course. And now keep in mind, so this was the contact view. Now, if you are <coughs> If you are using leads or contacts, uh, leads as well, you will have to go to, to the leads, so just open a lead, and then go through the same steps. You go to edit layout here, so now here I'm on a lead, go through edit layout here, and you continue. You will add the section again here. So, sales wings. Two column, left, right. Okay, here you go. You're gonna then add current interest. You can add total website visits. You can add last visit. So once again, I'm gonna take since last visit. I'm gonna add time of last visit in this case and lastly I'm gonna add the favorite field which is showing me is he a favorite or not and mark favorite where I can opt in or uh, opt out of notifications of new lead visits and I'm gonna save that so now we got the sync going on the leads and the contacts now I'll give you a quick tip now how I would use or how I use sales wings inside Salesforce. We typically work with lists. So when our marketing team is sending out newsletter campaigns, we use MailChimp, for example, we, we're, getting, we're getting live information about leads who visit the website after these campaigns and sales wings immediately qualifies the best leads for my team. Now, in order to quickly see which one are the hot leads that the team needs to follow up with after a campaign, we've created here a view called, now if you go to contacts here, you select the view sales wings, hot contacts. You can also see all the sales wings contacts, favorites, warm contacts, cold, and so on. For example, what I'm gonna do here now, I'm gonna take all contacts and you will see there's probably not a lot of data in there. Um, but you can now, you have here by default, you have, you can see, is he a favorite? What's his current interest? So what's his predictive score? What's the name? So typically in this case, so we, we, we've, we've, uh, we have the email address, but it, it's gonna show the name on your end. So the email address, and you can opt in or opt out of him, of, of, of notifications. Now, what I recommend you to do here is edit this view. So just click here and edit, edit it. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and add a couple of handy fields. So if you scroll down here, 
Here you can edit this view. I'm going to go down to point number three, select fields to display. I'm going to add the, the owner, the owner first name. That's the, that's the, that's the salesperson's that's the salesperson's first name. So you, so they can quickly see whether or not that's their lead. Okay. What I'm also going to add here is the total website visits. This is an other neat way to, to filter, to sort the list by total website visits. So for example, your sales team might say, well, now I want to follow up with all the leads that have been tons of times on my website. So, okay, so show me those on top. This will allow it. Uh, for them. I'm also going to add here the time of last visit. So here you'd like, you want to take the time of the last visit, which allows them to have a view on all SalesWings contacts sorted by last visit. So that's very, that's very handy. So you want to add that. Now, of course, you can add other fields. That's really up to you. But these are the ones I recommend to add as a minimum. So we're going to save. So now you can see. So here, if I sort the time by the time of last visit, I will see, so the last visit here have been, okay, 30th of November, 2016. So now I've connected it to, to an old account. This is why I don't have any new data here. But this is very convenient now for the sales team because they can say, I want to see who are my top visitors. Okay, so here we got some people they visited over 20 times. Then I can check here. These are my leads. You will see the lead status here. So this is the, the predictive score, remember? Uh, neutral means there's, there's, a, there's a neutral interest, there's no strong interest, no weak interest. Uh, this is leads at risk. They have not been on your website in quite some time. Uh, actually, typically more than two months. We have cold, they're kind of, also it's been quite some time they've not been on your website, more than a month typically. Um, and then we have what we don't see here is the warm leads and the hot leads because it's a bit of an older uh, an older account I'm connecting it to. But uh, this is this will give you a fantastic view on your strongest leads. And that leads to more sales at the end of the month for every sales rep. And that's very powerful. Now, I believe I've gone through everything. If you want to see the status of your sync, you can go here to plus. Now, if you go to plus here, you will see there's the sales wings, the sales wings section here. Here you will be able to see is my sync running correctly. Now, sales wings takes about two minutes to synchronize 5,000 leads or contacts. Okay, so it, it typically goes very fast and we give it a quick break. So we typically wait uh, between five and 10 minutes between every sync. Uh, to have a have a good interval and respect your your API call limitations from Salesforce. So here, uh, you can pause a sync just in case, but you don't want to do that. Um, but in case you feel something is not right, you know the data is not coming over. First, have a look that the sync is running. So you can also you can pause it and then you can resume it. Um, and that's typically something you can you can test. If you have a lead which is not showing data in Salesforce and not in SalesWings. Uh, as mentioned, you want to go check that the sync is running correctly. Uh, make as well sure that they have the same email address. So SalesWings only uh, only syncs data if there's a, a contact or a lead with a matching email address. That's very important. And then, of course, if you have you know further questions, just go back to the app. Uh, you will find here the chat. You can start a new conversation, and you'll be able to chat with one of our uh, of our customer success managers. Okay, so this is the installation of SalesWings for Salesforce. It's been a pleasure showing you this today. Uh, I wish you all a great day, and if you have any questions, we're here for uh, to help you. Thank you very much, and uh, go sell.